All right, guys, here are the top five fabrication mistakes I see people make, and here's how to avoid them. If you're tacking a project together, avoid tacking it in the center, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because you're gonna have to come back with a flap disc and grind it down. See, now if you tacked it in the corner, you can run from corner to corner and never have to grind your tack. So I'm gonna show you two welds. The first one I'm gonna show you is gonna have no tack on it. The second one I'm gonna show you is gonna have a tack dead center of the weld, and I'm gonna show you the different outcome you get. So there's our first one with no tack in the center. So as you can see, there's a tack right there in the middle of the weld. I'm gonna go ahead and run over it and show you the result versus no tack. So here's our weld with no tack. You can see it's got a nice, even, uniform layout there. I was a little quick at the end. I should have spent a little more time at the end there to let it fill that crater in a little bit more but it's really not bad. You can see it's not undercut. It's a good weld. Where the tack was, it's raised. So I would, I would say there's probably a little bit of porosity in this weld. I'll grind that out later and clean it up, but you, you could see the difference, especially when you look down the weld. See how raised it is in that one area? That's where the tack was. Another common mistake I see people make is when they're marking out their material to get ready to add pieces to their fabrication project. They'll mark things on edge. You don't wanna do that. Any builder, anyone worth their salt that's building anything is gonna tell you to mark things on center. So we have 24 inches here. We need to weld in five bars. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna divide 24 by five. Well, it looks like our correct spacing is gonna be four inches. So we'll just mark this thing out real quick. Sometimes it's better just to let the tape measure, measure drop instead of trying to hold on to it and keep it up in place. So we'll go ahead, we'll run that right there. Pop our Sharpie cap off. There's four, there's eight, there's 12, there's 16, and there's 20. And that's one, two, three, four, five marks. So there you go. And now it's marked on center, so when I put my piece of tube in there, I know it's centered up. And of course I'll do the same thing on the bottom to make sure everything's square, plumb, and centered. All right, so let's go ahead and put a piece of square stock in and tack it up. Right in the corner, like I said before. I'm gonna check it out, make sure it is square. It needs to be twisted a little bit, so we'll give her a little twist, okay? Now that we've got one tack on the bottom, we'll go ahead and center our top up. And then let's give this a little, a little tap in there. A little tap the other way. Okay. And then I'm going to weld to the opposite corner. I'm going to do it down, same down here. And I'm going to go ahead and do it right here. Corner, corner. Something burning my leg. Another corner. Now we'll weld it out. All right. So we should have even spacing top and bottom. So we got about three and a half right there and about three and a half right there. So that worked out really well. For my next tip, we're going to cut this piece down because every good fabricator is going to have to do some fitting and cutting, isn't he? So the next thing I wanna talk about is when you're cutting something down, how you can get an accurate cut every time and what not to do. And I see this mistake a lot and a lot of guys end up cutting stuff just a little short, which in welding is okay, or sometimes they cut it a little long because they do the opposite. Subscribe! So when you're measuring your piece out, and in this particular instance, I need to cut it at four inches. So here's the four inch mark. It's, tape measure is not the best, but that's okay. So don't mark, you don't want to put your line right where four inches in is. 
because if you go ahead and you cut it with your chop saw right there, you're going to end up being short because of the blade width of the chop saw. So what you actually want to do, and I'm going to come on this other side so I don't confuse myself, is I like to mark behind it. And a Sharpie width is roughly going to be the same blade width as your chop saw. So let's go ahead and cut this thing and I'll show you that I got a perfect cut. So I'm just going to use the blade, line it up, line of sight it, put our jaw in there. All right. She looks like she's about good. All right, and we should have exactly four inches. And if you look, I am dead fucking nuts four inches. Perfect. A quick fabrication tip, especially if you're out in the field or if you're having to walk around with your grinder a lot, tie your grinder up. It's that simple. So you just tie them together. I like this type of knot because it doesn't put any pressure on either of the plug heads. And uh, it does get caught on shit occasionally. That's the disadvantage to this. But nothing worse than being a couple of stories up and your fucking grinder comes unplugged and then you gotta climb down just to plug in a fucking grinder. A big mistake I see guys you, uh, do is they go measure something out. They mark it just the way I showed you. But then they, they're trying to cut with a grinder and you know, you're up somewhere and a grinder's your only option and they cut it fucking crookeder than shit. And that just makes everybody's job harder, makes everybody's life harder. A speed square is your friend. It's not just for fucking carpentry, it's for welding too. So like, let's say we need to cut this down to four inches. This side looks a little wonky, this side looks square. This is the side I just cut. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get our four inch measurement just the way I showed you to do it before. You wanna account for blade width. So I'm gonna do it right behind four inches, right there, because I want the cut to be at four inches. I'm gonna take my speed square. I'm gonna line it up with the line, hold it tight, run it back and forth. Flip it, keep it square. When you get to these rounded corners, it can be a little tricky sometimes. You can end up fucking your measurement up. I've seen that, especially when you're doing columns. We're again, just making a line, making sure it's square. And we're gonna go all the way around the tube, all the way around it. We wanna make sure it's high and tight. You'll know you did it properly if when you get to the other side of the tube, your lines match up. And in this case, they do. So that's nice and square. Now we're gonna cut it. When you're out in the field with your grinder and you're trying to make a straight cut on a column or what have you, don't cut like this. You see, I'm just jamming the blade into it. Chances are it's gonna grab and start going crooked. What you wanna do is this. You wanna run the blade along the top and score it. Score your metal before you make your cut. That's gonna keep you nice and straight. And then see, now I can go ahead and push through the metal because I have my score to keep me straight. Another thing you don't want to do is cut so the sparks are blowing away from you. You see how that, it's catching it? It's because I'm cutting backwards with the grinder. And sometimes when you're out in the field, you have no choice but to cut like this because, well, the grinder, quite frankly, will not fit where you're trying to place it. What you want to do is go ahead and cut so the sparks are blowing back towards you. And try to stand out of the way of the sparks so you're not going through welding shirts every seven goddamn seconds. I know that was a big mistake I made when I first started in this industry. That's five fabrication mistakes you don't want to make. It's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to save you a lot of bullshit. It's going to save you a lot of hassle. And it's going to help your employer not think you're mentally retarded. But anyway, guys, I'm Melt Metal Anthony. If you like what you saw here today, like it. If not, I mean, you can stick it in your ass. I really don't give a fuck. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one.